Hello and welcome back, grade 12. We're going to continue our lesson from yesterday when we left off dimensioning, detailing the spindle and the table lamp project. I left off with the Q drill note, and I'm going to continue on and complete these two dimensions and then move on to the base. So I have two left I need to add, which is the national pipe thread. So I'm going to do this with a quick leader leader text and then create this note enable auto stacking yes time 1 8 times 27 NPT national pipe thread one backspace we're going to be stating that this is a half inch depth and we're going to be putting the counterbore symbol in, which is found here under symbol. And then we're going to hit OK. That takes care of that dimension. And then we also have to dimension the major diameter of the Morse taper, which is here. Now, this can be a bit difficult because if I run a dimension this way, it's going to interfere with this extension line and it's also going to interfere with this leader text that identifies the taper. So we're really not in a, in a really good position to create this dimension. Uh, one, one thing we could do is run a detail view. So what we can do is go to place views, grab detail view, and we'll just create a detail right here. And we'll drop it right here. And because if I run the dimension on the front view, it's very difficult to notice it because there's so many hidden lines as a part of these threads. So I think this is a more clear way to, to run that dimension. So we'll go back to annotate, grab our general dimension. This can be a standard dimension. And we'll pull the one off, the one inch off like this. We're going to go to, I'm going to click to the left. I'm going to add the diameter symbol. I'm going to click to precision and tolerance. I'm going to be upping the primary unit to three decimal place. And I'm going to be going into my tolerance method. So we're going to be going and selecting deviation, right? So we also have to up the tolerance. So the primary tolerance will go to three decimal places. And we're, we're going to make the upper tolerance two thousandths of an inch. Upper, lower will be left as triple zero, and we're going to hit OK. And to me, that's, that's the best way to dimension this because this is just going to cause some overlapping on that right side view. So this looks good. We're also going to be creating another detail view for the base. And I might as well create that now. And this is to clearly see this diamond pattern, right? Our serrations. So we're already we're already in the uh, in the groove here. So we might as well do it now. So we'll say place views, select detail again, and I'm going to pick. I, I just need to pick one section of the base. So I'll, I'll just go with the bottom right. grab it, and then I'm going to be placing it off to the side here. Like that. And this is two to one scale now, so it's going to be easier to see. We also have to remember that we're going to be adding a center mark to the reamed hole in the detail view as well, that we've already done here in the, in the normal front view, I mean top view, sorry. So we're going to go to annotate, grab center mark, select the reamed hole diameter and add the center line. 
perfect. All right, so we've done all the dimensioning for the leg, the spindle. Now we're left with just the base. So again, I'm going to be going back into the hub. And we're just going to take a look at that, those sketches again. Because like I said before, we're actually copying a lot of the, the tolerances and a lot of the dimensioning methods we've already seen on this sketch. Right, so that, just to kind of go back on what I did earlier, just to kind of reiterate this, that this is that one inch diameter plus two thou. So this is why we've used this tolerance method. Right, just to make that clear, we're going to come down and we're going to take a look at the dimensioning of the base. Now we're going to clean this up a bit. We're going to add a couple of more dimensions to it to make it a little more clear. So I'm going to be making some changes to this for sure. So let's click back into the drawing. We're going to be running the 2.313 dimension which is the length of the hexagon, one of the hexagon sides. They're all the same, actually. They're, they're typical. So standard dimension. And bring it up far away. And again, we have to up the primary unit to three decimal places. Right, this is, this is precise. Right, anything that's decimal value is a precise dimension anything fractional usually has quite a bit of tolerance right a little bit more margin for error so we're going to continue we're going to run we need to know this dimension here and again the primary unit will be upped three decimal places and then lastly we're not going to run another 1.156 but we're just going to run the overall length so I may have to move some of these views out of the way because I'm starting to run out of room. So I'm just going to move some of this stuff out of the way. Give myself a little more space. Right, I can, I can even move this down a bit. Okay, that's better. Right, we're trying to make sure the spacing even between the top view and the front view and the bottom view and the, and the front view is identical. So we're just going to eyeball it, make it look as good as we can get it. All right, so now we're going to run our overall length. This should be 4.625. We have to up our primary unit. All right, so that takes care of those ones. And we also have some details that we need to run for, the, for this detail view as, as well. So we have to talk about the pitch of the serrations. We have to talk about where it starts. So I think it's best, even though we, we established that we started the first the first row about 0.2525 away from the edge. The machinist won't really care about that dimension. They'll just want to know how to get it started from the edge to the center because they're going to be using a, a 90 degree end mill to cut that slot. So we're going to dimension it a little easier for the machinist to understand. So we're going to come off this edge, of course. And we're going to click to the first center point of the groove. We're going to pull dimension off. Now this one here should be changed to a fractional dimension. Right, that's going to be 5 sixteenths. We're just going to move this a little out of the way, this isometric view. So we're filling up this D-size sheet. It's getting a bit crowded now with lots of details and dimensions. We're going to pull this like this. And then we're just going to add a typical 
because we know so we're going to click the text and we're going to add a typical because we know it's going to be the same on the other side all right so that's where that begins and then we know that the pitch is three eighths so we're creating we're going from the center point here to the next groove and it's the same thing so this dimension here is going to be fractional let's right click left click OK to exit select it select default fraction and we're going to click on that dimension again and add a typical because we know that the pitch Okay, so we just got to fix this up a bit. Chain these up. Okay, and that looks good like that. And the last thing we need to know is the, is the serrations detail right so we're going to do another we're going to do a quick leader note we can point right to where they all intersect just select one of them quick leader text we're going to go from here and we're going to run a leader text note out and we're going to make the note that it is the serrations we're going to type that and we're going to go below their 1 16th Auto stacking enabled times 90 degrees. So we have to add the degree symbol. And, and again, this is tip as well, because this is everywhere. And that takes care of that note there. So we're just going to make sure that line is straight nice and horizontal and now we're going to move on and take a look lower so we have to use the bottom view to identify all of the drilled holes right because we can't use the top view because most of them are in hidden detail so we'll come down here and we have a couple of more dimensions that we can we can space out that we don't need to fit and crowd on the top view which is the height of the hexagon so it doesn't matter if I put the linear dimensions on the left side or the right side because it's not going to be going in between views so I'm just going to select one side to run all my ordinate dimensions and another for my linear so I'll keep my my linear dimensions on the right so this is standard dimension because it's decimal value and up your tolerance to three decimal place in primary unit, 2.003. Same thing again, the height, this should be 4.005. Up the primary unit, one decimal place. And now we're gonna work on all of the other holes. So we have another tolerance that we're gonna have to that we're going to have to apply to the board hole where the spindle inserts. So general dimension. This is going to be this is going to be limits stacked. So a primary unit is four decimal places, primary tolerance is four decimal places. We're up, we're upping, we're actually, sorry, we're lowering the bottom. We're deviating a difference in a, in a tolerance of a thou and a half. So we're gonna 
backspace 2, we're going to go 0.8745. We're going to leave the upper value as 0 0.8750. And we're just going to take a look at this and we're going to double check that that's correct. And that's what I have in the, in the machine shop sketch. All right, now we have the bolt circle diameter. So that's something that we're gonna have to add. So we're gonna, we haven't done this yet and I haven't annotated that. So we're gonna select centered pattern and we're gonna start by selecting the center of the base, the center of that hole the center of the bottom hole, we're going to come up and select this one and come back to here. And that's going to create your, your bolt pattern. So after you've done that, you can let, right click and left click create. And this is going to give us a bolt pattern that we can dimension to. So a general dimension, pull this out to be in line with the 0.875 as best as we can. And we're going to be editing this to be a fractional dimension. And that's good enough for that one. And then lastly, we have one above. We have to detail our drilled and reamed holes. So general dimension. This is going to be a fraction. We're going to go to text and what we can do with this, we'll, we'll space that down by one, that quarter inch diameter and we're going to leave a space. We're going to type ream because that's what we're doing. We're going to click above and we're going to type 15 60 fourths, auto stack enabled and then we're going to type drill because we're drilling a 15 fourths hole first and then we can hit OK. And we'll just, we'll just uh, line that up a bit nicer. And what's left? Well, we need to know how deep to drill the 15 fourths hole and the quarter inch reamed hole. So I can actually do this up here in the section view because I have a, have a right hand section view that I can use to show those depths very, very clearly. So I'm going to have the dimensions come out the right side. So we're going to start with the, we're going to start with the <clears throat> reamed hole, which is shorter dimension. Gonna pull that one out, hit OK, and then one more for the depth of the drilled hole. This one's gonna come out to about here. Both these dimensions here are gonna become fractional. So hold control down, select them both, go up to your bystander dimension and adjust to fractional size because these aren't so critical. These depths are not very critical. And what do we have left? We're still not finished. There's a lot, a lot of dimensions to, for this detail. We have to discuss the base, the concave milling. So we're going to be doing that on the left side of the front view. So this is going to be fractional dimensions. So select dimension, Select fraction from the get-go. We're going to start with the half inch.
also this one eighth. The thickness of the base, which is going to be an overall dimension, and also the depth of the concave radius. We're going to pull that up and make it consistent, and this is going to be tip. And then we're going to pull this to that side so it's not interfering here. And we're going to take a look at it and make sure that we're being consistent. I did forget a center line here, so I'm going to add one on my detail view for the spindle. So we'll just use a bisector here. That'll be the easiest way to do it. Simple, finished. And that should really be it. I'm just going to take one quick look again around to make sure I'm not forgetting something. But I think the dimension spacing is consistent everywhere. This one's not, so I'm just fixing that dimension up. And if everything, if everything looks good, we should be ready to just fill the title block in and then get this thing ready for drop boxing. So I think, I think I've got everything the way it needs to be. So that's what I'm going to do now is fill the title block in and this is going to be our lamp assembly and detail view detail views finished i'm just going to hit the save button and go up to file we're going to go to i properties hit summary and this is again this is just basic review of something that you've been shown already so i'm just going to go ahead and, and type it in i don't need to do a commentary for this maybe just part of it right our title Right, we're calling this table lamp assembly. Uh, we go plus details. Project revision number is zero. Part number right 4m1 dash and i believe this is our fourth actually only our fourth drawing file for this semester we, we did the caster first we did the i believe it was called the valve body and we did the prb 25-4 and we skipped the sweep so this should be this should be number four someone can correct me if i'm wrong later we're going to go to status. We're going to go to checked by. I'm going to add my checker's name into the drawing. And the checked date. We're going to hit apply and OK. And we'll take a look at this. OK, everything looks good. So this is it. As soon as I hit save again, the only thing I need to do is just make my PDF copy. So we'll just do that. We're going to go to Save As, go up to Save Copy As. And we're going to change this in Save As Type to PDF and hit Save again. And now I've got all my files ready to submit to the assignment folder. So the assignment folder will become open today. You're submitting your spindle, your base and your leg, 3D solid model part file, your assembly file of the model, your drawing file, and your PDF copy of the drawing file. And that should be it. So this is going to conclude the table lamp lessons. So this is it. Let me know if you have any questions.
and this project will be a part of your midterm grade percentage. So just be aware of that. And I'm going to be setting a due date for this today as well. So take care, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.